You know, NXT this week wasn't really an amazing show by no means at all. I'm not saying it was bad. Compared to last week, last week's show was obviously the better show. However, I thought this week's episode of NXT, in my honest opinion, was a solid episode. Pretty solid for what it was. Um, But there's two things on this show that I actually enjoyed, believe it or not. And no, had nothing to do with any of the matches. Or nothing to do with Tommaso Ciampa rubbing rubbing it in the face of everyone now that he's the NXT champion. Well, more importantly, the fact that Ciampa, you know, rubbed it in the face of that old lady in the crowd. But two reasons why I actually enjoyed the show. Number one, the obvious, they got everyone that watched the show. But more importantly, me watching at home, invested and looking forward to... To take over Brooklyn 4. Which by the way. I will actually be in attendance. For that event. Take over Brooklyn 4. SummerSlam weekend. At the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. So if you mother flower. That's right. You mother flower. Are going to be at that show. Let me know in the comment threads. Let me know. Or if you see me actually at the show. Just say what up mother flower. Or something like that. And you know. It is what it is. But secondly, what I did enjoy about this show, it's obvious. It's obviously fucking obvious. If you notice on Raw and SmackDown this week, the one thing WWE's been doing, shoving down your throat evolution. Evolution, evolution, evolution. They had the talent from Raw, the talent from SmackDown, talking about evolution in some way, shape, or form. And tonight, there was zero mention Zero, zitch, nada. No mention at all of evolution. You didn't hear Ma Ronaldo. You didn't hear Percy Watson. You didn't hear Nigel McGuinness. You didn't hear not even any of the women on the roster from NXT. Like, I honestly thought, okay, they'd have Dakota Kai, Bianca Belair, Lacey Evans, Candice LeRae, or hell, even Shayna Baszler, to some extent, talk about Evolution, because again, Evolution is going to be the women from Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, from what I'm hearing as well, NXT UK, all at that one show. But I'm pretty much certain that once we are done with TakeOver Brooklyn 4, the taping leading up after that event, they'll probably start mentioning, mentioning it, all that and talking about it and stuff like that. But that being said, I thought, again, this week's episode of NXT was a pretty, pretty solid show. But Mother Flower, that's my honest opinion. I just always want to hear from you. In the comment thread of this video, or if not, shoot me a tweet at Heel Steven and give me your thoughts on this week's episode of NXT. So the show kicked off with highlights from last week's main event between Tommaso Ciampa and Aleister Black for the NXT Championship. And I talked about how the whole crazy ending where Ciampa won the title, right? And they show people in the crowd just screaming no and all in disbelief and stuff like that. Again, they show that package. And Jabba's champion now. Holy crap. Welcome to Champa's NXT. Um, from there, we get the first match of the... Yeah, we start the, we, we started off with a match. A tag team match. Heavy Machinery versus The Mighty. I thought this was a okay match to kick off the show. Nothing to go crazy for here, right? There are moments where both the Heavy Machinery men, like Tucker Knight and Oda Dozovich, hit these crazy spots. So Dozovich does like a spinning... Like power slam on one of the members of the mighty, and Tucker Knight shows off his agility and his strength, and he actually does a cannonball to the outside of the ring off the apron. Uh, there's a moment where the mighty work on the knee. I want to say of Tucker Knight because remember a couple weeks ago, they showed this whole clip where they're working out. Talk about the talk about the heavy machinery, right? They're working out in the gym at the PC, and Tucker Knight ended up getting hurt, and people were believing it was the mighty. So they were working on that injured leg. And it looked like the Mighty had the match ready to get ready to win all in the bag until the Street Profits pop out through the crowd. Because again, you gotta remember a couple weeks ago, the Mighty cheated to win against the Street Profits. So of course they will come out there and distract the Mighty, which caused a Tucker Knight to make the tag with Dozovich, where Dozovich ended up hitting the compactor with help of Tucker Knight to get the one, two, three. So because of the distraction, the Mighty lost here. And at the same time, yes, again, it was an okay match to kick off the show. Nothing to go crazy for, but it shows you 
uh, what's out there in the current NXT tag team division. When you got teams like the Undisputed Era, who are the current tag team champions, Mustache Mountain, Street Profits, Heavy Machinery, the Mighty, uh, War, War Raiders, uh, just to name a few, if you will. And look again. I'm enjoying it for what it is, but I, again, I thought this match was an okay way to kick off the show. From there, from there, Mother Flowers, we get uh, Mustache Mountain. Mustache Mountain, the former tag team champion, they went up against, if I'm remembering here, uh, Matt Knotts and Brandon Taylor, two enhancement guys here. Um, I'm going to say this. I want to say it was Brandon Knotts, right? Had on the world's smallest knee pads I've ever fucking seen. Holy shit. Like, I get it. You know, hey, it is what it is. You wear what you got to wear. But fuck, bruh. These knee pads look like something you would find on 2K18 almost. But the match for what it was, again, it was a squash match. Uh, just to, just for Mustache Mountain to get a win. And they did. They hit, like, this double team finisher. I want to say it was, like, a top rope, like... Uh, bull hammer, like leg drop, something like that, and they got the win. After that, they talked about how they were tag team champions at Royal Albert Hall, and how for Tyler Bate it was important the safety and the health of Trent Seven. That's why he threw out. That's why he threw in the towel. But now that Trent Seven is okay from his injury, right? I remember a couple weeks ago it was the Undisputed Era versus Mustache Mountain NXT for the tag titles, the rematch where Tyler Bate threw in the towel which cost them to lose their tag titles. And they want the rematch, and they're going to invoke it at TakeOver Brooklyn 4, which William Regal, later on in the night, made it official. So we're getting that match. It's going to be a fun match, I guarantee you it. A possible match of the night candidate, who the fuck knows? We'll wait and fucking see. But I look forward to seeing that match, really, to be honest here. Speaking of TakeOver Brooklyn 4, William Regal also, in that same announcement, mentioned that also confirmed for TakeOver Brooklyn 4, will be Ricochet versus Adam Cole for the North American Championship. Uh, like I said, you know, just like I just mentioned a couple moments ago, the idea of the Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong versus Mustache Mountain could probably be the match of the night, just as Adam Cole versus uh, Ricochet. You've seen what they've done before on the indie circuit, whether it be PWG or stuff like that. Just imagine what they can do in front of that New York crowd at the Barclays Center. It's going to be off the fucking chain. I can't wait to see it live. It's going to be fucking insane. I'm just telling you right now. Uh, after this, we get the EC3 versus Kona Reeves match. I thought it was okay. Really, to be honest, nothing to go crazy for here. Um, again, they were showing off the whole thing that Kona Reeves is the fucking, you know, greatest thing ever. Or the finest. Yeah, the fucking finest. I'll be honest about it too. To me, Kona Reeves... He's not doing it for me. When I see him, I, he looks like some guy I would have created on 2K18. Like, he's one of those guys that you see if you're in career mode, right, on, on fucking 2K, right? When you're when you're stuck in NXT, he's that generic guy you wrestle constantly to get a fucking easy win. That's what he looks like to me. That being said, this match, for what it was, it was an okay match. Uh, it looked like EC... There's moments in this match, of course, where EC3... Uh, show of vulnerability, where Conan Reeves actually got some offense on EC3 for some fucking reason. Uh, and it looked like EC3 was about to get the win. But the Velveteen Dream comes out. And he talks to EC3. Because again, there's this whole thing what happened at Royal Albert Hall. Where Velveteen Dream walked off on EC3. He walked out on him in their tag team match, right? And he's just talking and talking. Talking about, hey, if you really... You know, want to meet him, fight him, come to his world and shit like that. Which caused distraction. It looked like Kona Reeve got to get the upset win, right? Off distraction. But no, EC3 kicks out of the um, the Hawaiian drop. I think that's what, that's what they're calling it. The Hawaiian drop is modified like Samoan drop. And it gets a near fall. Then EC3 with the one percenter or the one percent. I know not the one percenter from Impact Wrestling, but it's the one percent. Gets the one, two, three win over Kona Reeves. Also mentioned in the announcement that was made by William Regal that it's going to be a takeover. We're going to get EC3 versus Velveteen Dream. So there's potential match of the night cal calibers, excuse me, for that event. When I mean, you think about it, it's just amazing again how NXT is once again putting the main roster to fucking shames, yo. Seriously, you know. 
But also we you know, early, also later on the night we see Mustache Mountain talking about the strategy, what they're gonna do, and they get interrupted by the War Raiders backstage. And War Raiders say, "Hey, they don't care who wins to take over; they want the next shot." So again, it, it's like, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's interesting to see where the tag team division in NXT is going right now. You know, it's looking great. It really is better than what you're seeing on Raw and SmackDown. I'll tell you that much right now. And after this, we get the NXT Women's Champion, Shayna Baszler, versus Candice LeRae. Now, you got to remember, a couple weeks ago, uh, no, it was last week, there was a brawl, okay, a little, you know, brawl backstage at, at Full Sail at the PC between Candice LeRae and Shayna Baszler, right? Because Shayna Baszler talked about, you know, all the women that she's beaten and all that stuff, and she mentioned Candice LeRae. What do you know? And this was obviously, again, a rematch from the Mae Young Classic. And I'm going to say this. It was a fun match for what it was. It picked up really at the end because literally it was Shayna Baszler working on Candice LeRae on her injured arm. And near the end of the match, it looked like Candice LeRae caught her second win, right? She goes for a finisher off the, off the, middle, off the middle turnbuckle where Shayna counters into her rear naked choke, right? The Fuka Huka, the Fukawara, you know, choke, if you will. I, if I botched the name, I fucking apologize. And Candace makes the ropes. And again, it's all these moves where Candace goes for like a fucking a line saw, right? And she misses. And Candace hits a penalty kick to like the face and then hits the fucking rear naked choke where Candace taps out. But again, the story here is Candace LeRae put up a fight. She put up a fight. And it was one of those things where, again, it just came up short. But here's the thing about it, too, right? And I said this last, I said this yesterday during my SmackDown Live review, you know, when I talked about Zelina Vega versus Lana, right? And how bad that match was. If you were to show, you know, somebody, a casual viewer who doesn't even watch wrestling at all, hey, this is the women's division in WWE. By the way, they're having a pay per view in a couple of months called Evolution. You should order, you should order it, right? And you show them that match from last night between Lana and Angelina Vega and how bad it was. They laugh at you. But if you want to show somebody a women's match, right, that could convince said person to maybe just maybe give Evolution a chance. Because believe it or not, there are some sick fucks out there that are willing to give Evolution a chance and are actually looking forward to Evolution. That are actually enjoying the fact that. That WWE left and right are shoving the shit down your fucking throat. Believe it or fucking not. This is the match you show them. Good storytelling. A good comeback. But at the end of the day, Shayna Baszler got the way. And then she goes back into the ring to attack, right? And then out comes Kyrie Saint, who was again facing uh, Shayna Baszler at TakeOver for the, for the Women's Championship. Uh, tries to, again, get in the ring. Get at Shayna Baszler, checks off on Candice, and Shayna Baszler kicks, literally kicks Kyrie City. Kyrie gets all mad and angry and shit, ready to fucking, you know, fight her and shit, if, if you will. I'm enjoying the build. Again, it's the third match from the Mae Young Classic, and we'll see where this goes to take over Brooklyn. But again, I just can't wait to see it live in person, Mother Flowers. And after this, we find out again that. At TakeOver, we're getting EC3 versus Velveteen Dream. We're getting Adam Cole versus uh, Ricochet for the North American Championship. But also, next week, we're getting Ricochet in action. He's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one match. I don't know against who. But also, we're getting the debut of Keith Lee. That's right, Keith Lee. The former WN, WWN champion. The former Evolve champion, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he's going to be in action and making his NXT debut. I'm surprised they're having him debut so soon. Like, granted, he had happened already, but normally with these debuts, they wait. Normally, like literally the like the NXT after takeover, literally on that same day, if you will. That's when they usually showcase these people. But I look forward to seeing his debut. Obviously, there's been a lot of good rave about Keith Lee, and I look forward to seeing it, seeing what he does. And I think, again, someone like him who's been busting his ass for a long time on the independent circuit, I think he deserves the opportunity, and I cannot wait to see what he does on NXT on his debut in next week, Mother Flowers. So make sure you fucking watch, because or else, Mother Flowers, I'm telling you right now. We then get the final seven of the show. We get Tommaso Ciampa, the current NXT champ, the new champion, by the way. Who I said last week was probably the best heel champion right now in WWE, and he is. 
He fucking is. I'm sorry. He comes out. It's funny because this is what's crazy about him, right? He comes out. Like, literally, his name pops up on the Titan Tron, right? His fucking name. The moment his name hits, people start fucking booing. The guy just comes out there, no music, how a heel should be. Like I said last week, he's a throwback to an old 80s heel, right? They're not selling merch on Twitter, none of this hashtag movement, right? He comes out there all smiling with the fucking championship. He talks about how him and the, how the belt looks good on him, how NXT is now the A show, which you think about it, if you really want to think about it, you know, Thoroughly, yeah, NXT is kind of it. Kind of is the A show right now in WWE, right? Think about it. You know, Raw is the C show, SmackDown Live is the B show, and NXT is the fucking A show. You know, and then you have on the side you have Two Hundred Five Live, <laughs> um, but that's around the point. And it's funny because people are just booing him. People are just telling him that he sucks. He's an asshole, right? And the funny part about all this, right? So he, so in the crowd is is an old lady, the same old lady from a couple of months ago, that I guess Champa got, you know, got in her face, whatever. He's like, oh, I remember you. I remember you. Look at me now. I'm the champion. This is my moment. Shit like that. Like he goes back to rub it in her face. I gotta say, the old lady that was in that crowd, she's a fucking sport, yeah. She's a true MVP of, the, of that whole segment. I'm gonna just say that right now. Um, but he talks about how at the end of the day, he got, he also mentioned Johnny Gargano for being a failure. Because think about it, right? If it wasn't for Johnny Gargano, right? Ciampa wouldn't be champ right now, right? It was Gargano's fuck up that made Ciampa the champion. Out comes Aleister Black, right? He's coming out and Johnny Gargano runs from behind, right? Literally behind Black and gets in the ring tries to like attack Tommaso Ciampa and gets on the microphone, right? He talks about how, you know, if it wasn't for him, he wouldn't be champion right now. People are chanting, you know, shut up Johnny or Johnny sucks or shit like that. And Aleister Black from behind, literally just waiting for the shit, all the shit to cool off, hits a black mass kick or the fate of black, if you will, to Johnny Gargano. And people are cheering this shit. Like, oh, you deserve it. You deserve it being a Gargano for being kicked in the face. People want to see it one more time. Because, again, you know what happened? Johnny fucked up. And because it was fuck up, now people are mad at Johnny as well. And it's funny, too, because, like, when Gargano, when Chavo was in the ring, right, talking in the ring and shit, this crowd in Full Sail, right, they're the smirky, annoying crowd, right? For some reason, they were chanting, you know, they were chanting, Freaking shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Normally, it's shut the fuck up, right? Whenever you go to a wrestling show, right? Like Ring of Honor or any indie show, right? When the heel's talking, you always hear the chant, shut the fuck up. They're chanting, shut the hell up. Please don't talk. Like, so polite and shit. So fucking ridiculous. But that was that, right? And then and after Black hit Gargano with the Black Mask kick, he says, you're right. You are the reason why... Champa's champion right now and walked away again um we all some of us know where this is going i know a lot of you out there that don't want to be spoiled they're gonna wait till next week what have you you might not know what's happening but for those of you that know what's happening already i look forward to seeing how they build this shit up again i look forward to seeing the continuation of again the great build-up for TakeOver Brooklyn from NXT. Again, NXT is once again putting the main roster fucking shame, yo. And it's, it is a shame. It's an embarrassment. It's a fucking embarrassment. It's an abomination, you know? Once again, the JV squad is putting the fucking varsity squad to humiliation. But that's my honest opinion, Mother Flowers. I want to hear from you in the comment thread of this video. Give me your thoughts on this week's episode of NXT for August the 1st. 2018 we are literally well right now it's august 2nd as i'm doing this recording right we are literally now as we speak about 16 more days away from takeover brooklyn 4 which i cannot wait to be in attendance for again if you're going to take over brooklyn 4 let me know in the comment third let me know on twitter if you're going to be there if you see me feel free to say hi what up or what's up mother flower something like that all right that's it for me. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button down below. Give the video a big old thumbs up. And that's it for me, y'all. It's wrestling and whatever, Mother Flowers. Mother Flowers.
It's Ciampa's NXT, y'all. I'm just telling you right now. It's fucking A-Show, bruh. It is what it is, motherflowers.